now, the place is here. And of course, it's BYOB. What else when you're at the Red Green Lodge for the Red Green Show, starring my uncle and the renowned rock on tour? Well, he's a bit long-winded for my liking, but Pierre Burton wanted way too much money for who he wanted to <laughs> Anyway, the owner of the Red Green Lodge and the star of the Red Green Show, Mr. Red Green. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Harold, for that interesting introduction. I certainly hope I can live down to it. <laughs> no problem, Uncle Red. Why don't you come on over here a minute, Harold? I'll introduce you. For those of you who have uh, never seen the show before, which is about everybody according to the ratings, uh, Harold here is uh, the producer, director, and also my nephew, uh, which sort of tells you there's a bit of a huge favor involved in the show here. I think it would only be fair to also mention that I control these elaborate video effects equipment that keeps the show young and hip. <laughs> I used to go to the next segment, or if I feel this current segment is failing to sustain the interest of our ever-increasing viewer demand. Yeah, but not right now, Harold, because you introduced me as a raconteur, and I have to raconte a while before we move on. Oh, okay. I'm just going to play with my axe a little bit while you raconte, but I will be listening. Larry, is that a, you hear me right? Okay. All right, well, up at the lodge last night, it was getting late, but uh, we didn't really want to go to bed, and there weren't enough dice for Yahtzee. Uh, so we decided to have a whittling contest. Oh, sorry. Oh, was that you, Larry? <laughs> all right, so we all went out looking for a piece of wood that we could carve into something, and we said that at 11 o'clock would be the cutoff. You had to have your entry in by then, and first prize would be that your entry didn't go into the fire. <laughs> Harold, you took us into the next segment. Oh, sorry, Uncle Red. Larry, don't. <laughs> Jams and jellies and candies and sweets. Nutmeg and Easter egg and assorted meats. Chocolates and macaroons and various unidentified treats. I think it's time someone washed these sheets. <laughs> this week uh, on Handyman Corner, I'm gonna take you outside and uh, show you how to change a flat tire. Now, everybody gets a, gets a flat tire uh, quite often, actually. Maybe you got it from uh, tailgate in one of them glass delivery trucks, <laughs> or uh, maybe you, you run over an animal while he was yawning. <laughs> I, got, I got this one uh, from old man Sedgwick uh, picking his toenails and uh, throwing them out the window. <laughs> anyway, uh, the first step here is to, uh, is to get the hubcap off there. <laughs> All right, now, uh, this, this particular wheel has been on, been on the truck uh, since, uh, since I bought her new, and uh, now some people say uh, you should rotate the tires. I don't I don't really understand that. I mean, they get rotated while you're, while you, I mean, so I think some people just look for work. But uh, with them being on there that long, and these nuts are uh, rusted on there like uh, cow flaps on a waffle iron. So what we need to do is uh, throw in some uh, penetrating oil. And I say, you know, if you're gonna put penetrating oil on it, uh, there's no sense uh, being skimpy, holding back. Uh, you gotta soak, you gotta really, really soak it in there. and. You know, we, uh, we like soaking things in uh, up at the lodge. <laughs> I mean, for the price of a, of a can of this stuff, you know, it's, it's very, very cost effective. That's, uh, 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 I love the smell of this stuff. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's starting to loosen me up a little, too. <laughs> Maybe I use a little, a little too much of the, of the penetrating oil there. Anyway, that's all. Now we gotta uh, loosen off the nuts here. Uh, all right, all right, that'll, that'll do her. Uh, now I got the tire iron, put the tire iron on there, and it's a simple tool, but it's a, it's a, it's a useful tool. I like my brother-in-law. All right. finding now is that the uh, the nuts on this wheel are tighter than say the discs on my spine <laughs> so uh, we got to switch to the law of the lever which is uh, it's not working lever <laughs> All right, uh, what I do now is uh, stick this pipe on the 
stick this pipe on. This adds some uh, leverage, and uh, I can really, uh, really horse this down now. Oh, really horse her. Really, really, really horse her down. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Well, uh, as Confucius say, uh, if at first you don't succeed, uh, switch to power tools. <laughs> Ratchet, uh, rocket, winch, racket, wrench, racket, racket, shrink, shrink, shrink. Put that on here and then. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, sorry, Miss Lowe. Uh, all right, uh, what we're going to have to do is switch to uh, an innovative alternative uh, to the normal uh, tire change in technology, and this will require the handyman's secret weapon. Duct tape. <laughs> what we do is uh, we've uh, duct taped the spare tire uh, right on, right onto the flat there. Uh, of course, now uh, this is only temporary unless it works. <laughs> so that's got her done. Uh, remember, uh, until the next time, uh, if the women don't find you handsome, uh, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> with the results of the Whitling contest. If there's time, we can only hope. <laughs> it is spring. The groundhog comes out of his hole and sees a shadow. It is the shadow of my right front tire. That means winter will last another six weeks. But not for him. <laughs> so, uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, we had the judging for the Whitling contest at about 11 o'clock. Uh, Stinky Peterson went first. Uh, he held up a tree branch that he'd carved out of the coffee table. <laughs> a heck of a nice job on it, too. And old man Sedgwick got up, but he didn't have anything to show because he thought we'd said whistling contest. <laughs> And he was real mad because he'd gone the whole evening without eating crackers. <laughs> and he had taken his teeth out, which explained why Moose Thompson couldn't get comfortable in the Naugahyde recliner. Excuse me, Uncle Red. I don't mean to interrupt the, fa the flow of this fascinating story you you're, you're articulating so well, but I was just wondering, I have a little problem. Do you, do you know what this control does? No, I don't, Harold. It does that. <laughs> Man. Hello, Red. Yeah. How'd you like to take a ride in the RV? Dolores is all ready to go. Dolores? Are you taking the ex-wife? Uh... No. Oh, no. My RV is Dolores. Oh. My ex-wife's name's uh, something else. <laughs> anyway, she's all gassed up, oiled up, washer fluored up, battery acid up, ready to go. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I get going, we can just no. jump on the road. No, no, no. Can't do it. Can't do it, man. I'm, I'm kind of tied up today, but I need this uh, outboard motor fixed, you know. Oh, well, Red. Uh, geez, I'm a little busy, Red. <laughs> oh, man, I'm really strapped. I, I, I need this. I need this done. Well, I got a lot of jobs to do, Red. You're going to have to take a number. Well, all right. Uh, where's the numbers? Oh, right, yeah. That's the first job I got to do is find a place for that rack with the numbers. <laughs> well, um, maybe I could just take a quick look. See, I think it's kind of the pull cord, I think, has come off the wheel. See, she kind of... Right, just yeah. Like that. Yeah. Well, a new motor's going to cost 1200 Red. Yeah, well, I was kind of thinking we'd just get this one fixed. We're a little, little strapped for cash up the lodge. Oh, know? right, okay. Uh, well, you better grab my tool. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, right. oh, that, that's not good for the motor, right? Uh, okay. Watch the RV. Uh, yeah. Um... What do you suggest? Oh, I'll get an apple box here, Red. Oh, yeah, that's what great. we'll do. Okay, and I'll just, great. Uh, oh, great, great. Oh, thanks a lot. That's great. That's super. Out. That's super. I'll well, just get... Full <laughs> uh, cord. Uh, uh, I, th I thought you were going to get my tools. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Can you grab me a root beer in there, Red? <laughs> yeah, sure. Boy, it's not one thing, it's another in this business. <laughs> 
If you're happy and you know it, get up out of your chair, get in your car, and get the hell away from here as fast as you can. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, get up out of your chair, get in your car, and get the hell away from here as fast as you can. If you're happy and you know it, get up out of your chair, get in your car. All right, get in it. Get in the hell away from here as fast as you can. Quicker than that even. All right, that went well. <laughs> Oh, Uncle Red, this is so great. It's viewer mail time. This is this is my favorite part of the show, and many people's as well, because this has gone from potential liability to an obvious highlight in the program, to which I attribute only the fact that I have added so many uh, production values, and everything that's happening is due to me. I truly believe that. Just read the letter, Harold. I'll just get right to the letter, I suppose. <laughs> See, now that's good, because you're helping with the pacing and stuff. That's really great that you remind me of those things. This letter today is from Quebec. Uh -huh. Dear Rouge Vert, <laughs> I'm trying to understand your show, but the language is so confusing. Could you please help me? Tell me the difference between a mountain lion, a puma, and a cougar. Well, Harold, basically the spelling. Uh, other than that, uh, those three are all the same animal. Well, what do you mean by that? Like, like they're in the same family or something? Because they're not the same animal. Unless, of course, I completely misunderstood my mammal volume of the Time Life books I got at the IGA. Now, those are the same, uh, same animal, uh, Harold. Uh, see, in English, we have slang words. So we'll say groundhog, or we'll call it a gopher. It's the same animal. Or a deer, we'll call it a doe, a stag, or a buck. Uh, if you have a camel with one hump, we call that a dromedary. Uh, if a camel has three humps, uh, we call it a national inquirer. <laughs> Of course, with a beaver, we'll call that uh, a muskrat or a badger, but uh, they're all the same animal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, another thing people don't realize is that a, uh, a moose and, uh, and an elk and a mountain goat, <laughs> all three of those are there. They're the same animal. And also a woodpecker. <laughs> all four of them actually are the same animal. Oh, no way. No, that can't possibly be. I don't even believe that. No way. I think there's a dramatic difference between a woodpecker and a mountain goat. Well, you're calling me a liar, Harold? Oh, no, 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 Uncle Red, no, no. I wouldn't call you a liar, just, you know, you could be operating under sheer ignorance. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, that's all right. <laughs> Something uh, a little different on the adventure with Bill uh, this week. Uh, Bill thought he'd uh, show you that he's a you know, bit of a sport, a bit of a, a natural, uh, uh, well, not really natural in anything, I guess, but... Hey, I thought I'd uh, show you about water skiing. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe cleaning off the dock uh, might have been, well, you know. <laughs> anyway, he gets himself set up there. Uh, this is the way he's going to take off uh, a little bit. He's, uh, he's, uh, now, he wanted to explain to me the hand signals. Speed up, slow down, uh, go straight, turn left. Uh, I got bored of it. Anyway, whatever. And then this stuff, I'm just as glad I missed all of it. Anyway, he's all set, throws the rope in, and uh, gives me the signal. And uh, I love this part. I just love just giving up the gas. And, yeah, now there you are. And, oh, 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 boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. And so he puts some of the goalie gloves on to make it a little easier on the fingers, but then I couldn't get the signal. But then he, okay, I got it. And away, oh, love this part. Yeah, yeah. And away we go. And uh, But look at his ski. Got the pin jam between the boards on the dock there. And what a shame. Let's look. Oh, oh. Uh, water skiing's kind of dangerous. They try to get a little closer to the edge of this. Well, oh, oh. Uh, maybe a little too close. Now he sits farther back, so he won't that. And then, oh, looks good, looks good, looks good. Look, 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 look. Well, yeah, I think he's okay. You okay, Bill? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right. This was a misunderstanding. He was uh, bringing a ski in. And uh, he gave me the signal, meaning he had the ski, but I thought that, because I love this part, you know, and, oh boy, I felt bad. Uh, he's okay. Now he's, now he finally figured out, sit on the edge of the dock, and that way hey, you can control it better. Give me the, and this is the way we go. Oh boy, love the boat, love it. Uh, what he didn't notice, I guess, and I didn't either, was that the rope was kind of tied around, the, and I was kind of busy driving there, and then, so he thought he'd, I think he just kind of got ready for a big jolt there, but it was actually, oh, oh, ow, oh, 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 oh. And, uh, Bill's okay, you know, he's, uh, he's tied up for the weekend. Okay, first we gotta flip the cover off this motor. 
I get the little clips at the side there and flip them up. And this here? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now I need the cordless drill. <clears throat> oh, that's right here. And I need the buffing wheel. Okay. Now, now I want you to slap these together. <laughs> okay. This just uh, the little deal goes through here and clips in. Is that how she works? That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, can you take that up to the front and uh, just buff the bumper? <laughs> Why? Uh, Fix the motor. You want me to do that? Well, Red, I'm taking time off from cleaning the RV to fix their motor. <laughs> Not too hard. What? Don't take the paint right off the bumper. Not too hard. Oh. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, just taking a break, letting the lubricants get to the uh, the bolts. <laughs> All right. I'll just uh, I'll just go finish up then. Yeah, I just get underneath. You can you get underneath? I like it nice and clean underneath. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the way get there. Yeah. Okay, all right, I'm finished. Great, great. Yeah, me too. Uh, so, uh, what's the word here? Well, you see the cord there? Yeah. Take it off, tie a knot in the end of it. Yeah. Put it back on the wheel. Should be fine. Ready to go. Uh, well, what did you do, man? Well, I replaced the housing, uh, cleaned out the valves, and uh, cleaned up the prop back there. Well, that was, uh, that was real fast. That was... That was incredibly fast. That was almost too fast, wasn't it? Well, can I take you for a ride now? No, I think you just did, Glenn. <laughs> it is spring. As I look from my window, I see dogs mating on my front lawn, cats mating on the shed roof, moose rutting in the forest. I watch, mildly bemused. Then I go to the workshop and design a new trailer hitch. <laughs> I have a dream. I have a dream. Do you know who said that? Larry Hagman. <laughs> hey, watch it, Red! <laughs> no, I have a dream was said by Martin Luther King. I have a dream, too. It's a dream of where I'm running down a hall and I'm naked, you know, and I'm being chased by all these people. People of different uh, creeds and colors and, and sexes and income brackets and sexual orientations. It's huge. There's a lot of people chasing. It's like a stadium em emptied on here or Does the story have a twist ending, Harold? Like, you know, for example, a point? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just think that people shouldn't be judged by the, by the color of their skin or the shade of their skin or the condition of their skin. So my point is, I don't like being called zit face. Uh, sensitive, Harold. Yeah, but no, because I don't think you should make fun of pimples. Because acne is only one letter different than acme, which is like the best. Or, or one letter more than the word ace, which is numero uno, also the best. <laughs> yeah, oh, I agree with that, Harold. I think your pimples are the best I've seen. Exactly. <laughs> Well, it looks like we won't have time to get back to that whittling contest story. So stay tuned. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to whittle Harold into something useful. <laughs> that's a shame. What did you do again? Well, I just, I had to, I just took this off. Yeah. Cleaned it. Yeah. I replaced the housing. Well, that's the same housing. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I, I took it off and I put it back on. Why? Well, because it needed, it needed to tighten up, you know. And then I took the uh, I took the valves and 
No, I cleaned those out, so. There's no valves in this motor. This is a two-cycle. <laughs> oh, well, no, I just, I meant these, here. Oh, the, I always get valves, spark plugs all mixed up all the time. I took them out, put a little sandpaper, and put them back in. You took out these spark plugs? That's the one, yeah. All right, well, these, without, without taking the wires off? Oh, yeah, that's easy enough to do. Just give it a good brief on it, comes right out. And then, of course, when you put them back in, then you get a hammer. How much are you going to charge me for this, then? Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, this is my hourly rate in uh, parts. I'd like to say a few words to you teenagers out there. I hope I caught you between music videos. <laughs> my message is simple. Stay in school. Stay in school. School gets out at 3.30. Stay an extra hour. <laughs> I'll kill you. Maybe you can go down to the library open a thick book. You don't have to read it, it just makes an impression. Especially if there's hardly any pictures in it. <laughs> Believe me, you're a lot better off staying in school than you are going over to a friend's garage and making bombs out of gunpowder and copper pipes. <laughs> you're not gonna lose a finger in the library, unless somebody punches you in the nose. <laughs> Stay in school. Your teachers did, and they're not doing too bad. They get the whole summer off. <laughs> Stay in school. So anyway, uh, 11 o'clock rolled around and it was time to add up all the votes for the Whitling contest and uh, golly, we had a six-way tie uh, until we decided that you couldn't vote for your own. <laughs> and then uh, Buster Hadfield come in third. Uh, he had whittled a cane out of a 60-foot oak tree. <laughs> And then uh, Stinky Peterson uh, took second prize with a dinner plate that he'd whittled out of the outhouse door. <laughs> Actually, he would have won, but the food kept falling through the moon-shaped hole. <laughs> but the big guy, Moose Thompson, uh, took first prize uh, when, uh, in an attempt to uh, carve a big block of granite, he had whittled his whittling knife into an ice pick. <laughs> so it was, it was a great... Anyway, if my wife is watching, I'm going to be coming straight home after the show, so... Uh, Leave the porch light on if my folks are there, and I'll just keep circling the block till they leave. <laughs> and if my folks are watching, uh, see you soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at the lodge, uh, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>